you want to speak in Norwegian, can speak in Norwegian, and we will translate the questions if you, well, if necessary. Um, as far as I can see, uh, all the speakers are in favor of a, of a financial transaction tax. But we haven't heard much about the strategies. We've had some advice of what ATAC should do, but of course ATAC cannot implement this alone. So uh, personally, I would really like to hear from uh, Mr. Bartaida before he leaves. Uh, does Norway have a, a, a strategy? Do we have a policy strategy uh, to implement the tax? Or are we just waiting to see what the EU will do and then we'll act accordingly? Yes, right. No, I mean, I'm definitely not waiting. We are engaged with uh, several uh, international actors. I talked about the partnership with France at the G20. President uh, discussing these things in detail, uh, you know, or arranging uh, seminars with them and so on. Uh, we have the, uh, the working group that uh, Senavi and Stoltenberg is chairing on, uh, on um, uh, taxation for uh, climate purposes. Uh, and when it comes to the EU debate, that is obviously first and foremost an EU debate. Uh, so, so as a government, since we uh, are not members, uh, we, we to a certain extent have to wait for the EU debate. But as a my party, the, the, the Labour Party, is, as I mentioned, a member of the second largest group in the European Parliament and a, a, in a, a, a European governments. And we have a, a, an active work also on, on this and promoting it as a party in the European context. So we're working on several fronts, global and European, uh, and I think that's, that's our strategy. But I, I, I think in this case, as in many other, other of the issues where I think we succeed, is we succeed better if there's sort of a close partnership uh, between the interested civil society and, and government because we can promote this on, on different fronts but in a sense in parallel. Thank you. Could everybody hear that? Okay? Yes. So uh, you already asked to uh, tell us a question. Now please everybody just uh, sign to me and I'll... Uh... Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah for the break and Norsk for they are for Dorling. I Engels, for så viktig saker. Og min gebrok er norsk håper jeg er godt nok. Det er flere ting, og jeg var blant de som startet Tatar på Grønland, som var det første konferansen i Norsk Tatar for flere år siden. Og heldigvis vi likes med det, men før jeg ser det svart på hvitt, det tror jeg ikke enda. Så det er to-tre ting. Denne uken kom ut via en studie, at de bedriftene, de selskapene som følger samfunnsansvar og miljø- og klimaansvar blir nedgradert av spekulanter på verdens spørsmål. Det gjelder de som har satt seg i spisserspektiv og fører samfunnsansvar og klimaansvar, de blir nedgradert på drøsjene av spekulanterne. Det andre er at vi har tolv på mat fra fattige land, utviklingsland, men samtidig vi må stimulere det fattige land selv og få de spekulative penger fra USA eller andre finansmarkede. Tredje er det er det viktigste spørsmål for dere to som er med utenrikspolitikk å gjøre hvordan vi klarer nettopp det strategisk for å innføre det finansskatt at det virker virkelig hensynsmessig når vi har ikke klart å få USA på klasse bombe når vi har ikke klart å få USA på klimaavtale, og det er nesten umulig å få... Jeg håper at jeg lever til det at USA har gått av finanskatt. Til det siste, jeg vil si at jeg vil foreslå at vi kjemper for progressiv tas. Fordi jeg betaler progressiv fartsbot, og vi betaler progressiv med det av. Nå er en vår slippe betale det finansielle stats av Henning Alkensi, hva det menes med de pengene. Noen bør betale en middels, men noen som virkelig spekulerer eller med mengden, eller med antall transaksjoner, bør betale svierne prosent. Ikke promille, ikke halv promille, men 5 prosent og 10 prosent. Takk. Uh, so I have two questions for Mr. Bartaida. 
Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for the uh, stance that the Norwegian government have taken on this subject. Uh, but I still have uh, two questions. The first of them is, uh, I want, I'm wondering why Norway can't go in the lead and take the initi uh, initiative to implement this tax on their own before we have to wait for the significant number of other countries you were talking about. Uh, we earlier had a couple of economists here who said that this will not lead to a capital flight. And in that case, I'm wondering what, what is the reasons or why, why can't we implement this before the other countries? Um, how would we do that? The other one is uh, when we're talking about tax havens. I'm wondering why the Norwegian government fund is still uh, investing a lot of money in tax havens when the Norwegian government is against, officially against these tax havens. Thank you. Uh, do, do you want to talk first? Do you want to talk first? Yes, they are uh, the... Do you want to talk first? Yes, they are the... 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 That says tax system to be fair and equitable has to be pro progressive. But it's very difficult to introduce a progressive element into an international uh, financial transaction tax. So the uh, progressivity of the tax system has to be uh, dealt with elsewhere, primarily through income taxes. Uh, you can, of course, have taxes uh, uh, that favor the rich more than uh, or the poor or vice versa. But in general, it is the income tax which is uh, determining uh, whether or not you have a progressive tax system. Then I'd also like to comment uh, uh, some of the comments, uh, uh, namely on, on uh, many of us, including myself, have also promoted the financial transaction tax as also a uh, uh, one example of innovative development finance. Uh, there are other items too, and we have been engaged on that. Uh, but there is also a risk, I think we should be aware of, that if we uh, take it into, put into use, introduce some FTT or whatever in so-called innovative financing, and expect that this will mean uh, that uh, 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 a corresponding increase for development finance it won't necessarily, in real life, work out that way because there will be a strong tendency to put less money into formal development uh, cooperation uh, after that. So we have to be very sure that this is really additional funding and not something which replaces funding we already have. Because 
because we are rich and per perceived as very rich, it would be easy to say, well, you can do that because you've got all this money, you don't have a problem, we can because we have this problem. So I mean, it will not necessarily promote the cause. So I, I, my government is not going to do this on our own, but we actually have decided to do it with the, you know, with, in the expectations that we get all the countries. And there is actually a campaign now to get more countries making that decision that we, so it's not that we, it's, it's not the decision of an intention. It's a decision that we will do it when other countries come in, and that was made uh, last year, right? Uh, I think it was last year. And, um, uh, and on the state pension fund, well, you know, the, pro the problematic there is that we do not run the state pension fund, uh, and they, are, they run themselves, but they are governed uh, in, by certain ethical criteria, which is being set, you know, monitored and, and, and further, well, they've been set by parliament, but monitored by the ethical committee. And, uh, and, and so far they have had other, you know, main concerns than the tax haven issue. It, but it's a, it's a valuable part of the debate. But it's not something that we run on a day-to-day -day basis because that's a very fundamental aspect of the state pension fund or the oil fund, as uh, many people refer to. <coughs> it, is the, it is the biggest uh, sovereign wealth in the world uh, today because we beat the Arabs uh, recently and, uh, and, uh, and it's the only one with a serious ethical policy. So we should be quite proud of the fact that so much global investment, these are actually several percentages of European investments. Uh, and they are, you know, run according to a set of ethical criteria. And we can expand that list. I'm, I'm happy to engage in that debate, but that needs a broader discussion, whether it also includes tax savings. Okay. Uh, yeah, just a brief uh, comment. Uh, first of all, concerning the United States, uh, the thing is, this is the good thing with FTT. We don't need them. We can do this without them, and I think this will be a good opportunity to actually create a competitive advantage for the European banks. Introducing an FTT, showing that you want to take responsibility, and showing that, um, okay, but, <laughs> uh, introducing the FTT, showing that you want to uh, be responsible and that you want to actually contribute to society. I think this, in the end, will be a competitive advantage for the European banks, and so the United States will lose, I think. Then, um, about the government and why Norway can't go first, um, I think we can. It's, 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 it's just a question of political will or not. Uh, and what I, and what I think is really important also, this government, we have a parliament election in two years. This government wants to be re-elected. And I think this would be a winning case. Introducing the world's most popular tax and also fighting tax havens. This would be two very, very good uh, causes going into election campaigns in two years. So that's just my advice for you if you want to get re-elected. <laughs>
I think this could be this could make the difference in terms of the uh, right signals for the population. If you can integrate this type of sacrifices, this type of efforts, with the efforts of uh, countries from the south like Ecuador, that we are imposing already unilaterally a uh, financial transaction tax, but also with other type of initiatives, like the uh, keeping the oil under the soil, the Yasuni initiative. If we can get together with this type of initiatives, giving a, a message to the world that another world is possible, I think that that could be a very important uh, pass forward. Sure, what actually will work. So it is also a question of trial and error. But we have to be 
clear about the goals, what we want, but almost always the decisive thing is the political will, as was mentioned. Without political will, we may have the best possible plans and, and uh, aims, but if we do not mobilize the political will through both the political process, traditional political process, and the NGOs, the civil society, we will never get anywhere. Thank you. So we do not earmark taxes in Norway. Normally we just tax uh, what we think we feel necessary to tax incomes because uh, we need money for welfare. Uh, we do not earmark taxes. We tax harmful activities. We tax to protect the environment. And we tax to protect people. And that is why we need this tax. It's to prevent this harmful speculation. So that is the reason. That is the reason why we need this tax. We have been patient. And we have also been very accurate. And we've been, we, we had good economic analysis and good reasons for why we need this tax. We will continue this work. We've been really, really patient. And we won't leave this uh, case. So I'm looking forward to further cooperation with, uh, with the two of you, the, the Norwegian government, and uh, the rest of the uh, lovely, lovely organizations in the Robin Hood tax campaign. You will uh, see us, and you will hear more from us. Thank you.